Hi, I'm Toru Tanzaba. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm going to have a um, uh, series tutorial presentation on charge pump circuits. Uh, please send me email to this address if you have any question. Uh, if you have any more interest on this topic, uh, please visit this uh, website. You may find uh, another interesting uh, things. Uh, in the previous uh, tutorial, uh, uh, we uh, looked at the steady state circuit equation in low frequency operation. And in this uh, presentation, uh, we are looking at the dynamic behavior and its equivalent circuit. So in the previous uh, presentation, uh, we get the, the output charge during uh, one cycle as a function of the output voltage like this. And we also had the uh, uh, amount of charges at odd and even number stages, which has a different expressions like this. And those equations have uh, the small q. And therefore, you can input this value into here. Then uh, we get the, the amount of charges uh, in uh, every stage uh, expressed by output voltage like this. Okay, let's uh, look at the input to total charges during uh, the operation from the beginning. So this is the image, uh, image of uh, charge distribution after uh, some time passes. In this case, uh, we have three stages, and we have uh, output load capacitance here. Then height shows the voltage. With this indicates a C. Therefore, uh, each Qs are expressed by uh, this area. Q times V. And you can uh, calculate the total amount of charges by two different ways. First way is like this. So we have uh, the driver uh, to drive each capacitor and that driver input the current uh, charges during the rise time and during the total amount of time. When you look at the last driver to drive the third capacitor and total amount of charge input during that time period. If you uh, define that total amount of charges QDD3, then this amount is stored into the load capacitor exactly. So uh, delta Q out indicates uh, the the increase in the total amount of charges stored in the load capacitor. So this uh, charges uh, input uh, from the third driver like this. If you look at the 
driver uh, for the second capacitor. How much uh, charges are input through that driver? All the uh, charges are stored in the uh, output load capacitor or uh, the third capacitor. So QDD2 is equal to this uh, sum of the, these two uh, increasing amount of charges. And similarly, the first driver input total charges sum of those three. And finally, uh, as you uh, recall the charge pump circuit, the leftmost terminal is connected to VDD. So that VDD also input during the sum amount of time. So if you define that total charge QDD zero, then that uh, charge is distributed into all the uh, charge pump capacitors or the uh, output load capacitor. So uh, how much total charges uh, input from the power supply during uh, some amount of time? Uh, we call it uh, the QVD, uh, which is a sum of those charges. And of course, you can e easily uh, calculate that this uh, expression. And second way uh, to calculate how much uh, cap charges uh, input from the supply, power supply, during the some amount of time. And you can uh, check if how much charge is input from the supply every clock. So at the beginning of the operation, uh, the stored charge is almost zero. Then after some operations, the charge is stored into uh, charge pump capacitor or the load capacitor increases like this. So every uh, clock, uh, the some very amount of uh, small charges are stored. And you know that uh, value is exp expressed by uh, the output charge Q out. So I just uh, call it uh, small q uh, previous slide. Mm -hmm. And now uh, we call it q out. Why four? Uh, because uh, the we have uh, the three uh, capacitors in this uh, example. And the same amount of charge q out must be input from a driver uh, to each uh, pump capacitor as well as the input at voltage terminal, VDD. Therefore, 3 plus 1 uh, equal 4. So every moment, every clock, you have to input 4Q out. And this small, num small m indicates uh, the number of clocks. So uh, you can calculate all the amount of charge during some amount of time from the power supply is sum of Q out from clock zero to clock J. If the uh, this J uh, indicates the final time period. So uh, then uh, you get uh, the same uh, total input charge with the different form. So 
what you should do is next is uh, the equate those two uh, values. So in the calculation one, uh, we have already have uh, the charges stored in bomb capacitors. And also, if we, you set the initial condition like this, then uh, the total input charge QDD uh, from input terminal to the last capacitor, uh, you can ca est calculate with uh, this form. And uh, each Q uh, given by this then uh, you can input those Qs into this equation. Uh, with uh, a simple uh, some uh, uh, steps, you finally get this form. It is very interesting uh, that the, this form is, uh, shows like this. Uh, the so Q out times B out delta B out indicates the uh, output uh, the total amount of charges stored in the load capacitor times n plus one. So you have uh, n capacitors and one input terminal. Where the C out is exactly is expressed by uh, the, the actual load capacitor plus uh, additional uh, capacitance term, CPMP, and which has a form like this. And depending on the N is odd or even, uh, the expressions uh, a little different. However, if you uh, increase the number n, uh, this uh, function approaches one third of total capacitance of a charge bond, Cn. So this is a very uh, intuitive. The charge pump. Uh, so this indicates the charge pump must be charged up during the rise time. Uh, you have to e charge up internal capacitor as well as the load capacitor at the same time. So this uh, C load term indicates actually the total capacitance, total charges stored in the load capacitor, of course. And addition to that, you must uh, the charge up the bomb capacitor at the same time. And the effect is uh, the one third of total amount of charges of capacitors of uh, charge bomb. Uh, which is as if it is connected to the output terminal of the charge pump. In calculation second two, uh, we already have a Q out. Then you just input that equation and you execute the sigma and then uh, you have uh, the this equation, and after that, uh, the we get finally get this equation. And uh, from this equation, and if you execute uh, here, then uh, you get this. 
you can recognize this as uh, so uh, the left turn indicates uh, how much charge increase uh, from uh, j clock to j plus one clock and the right hand side shows the output current that during that moment and here as you see uh, this capacitors uh, c out is given by c load plus cpmp this uh, shows uh, a dynamic behavior uh, this is a difference equation for uh, in terms of uh, v out Uh, this uh, recurrence formula uh, is uh, solved with this uh, initial condition like this and uh, as you uh, probably uh, guess this uh, equation is expressed by this simple uh, equivalent circuit and uh, this voltage source and uh, resistance term are uh, given by uh, the steady state uh, equation in addition to that uh, if you uh, discuss the dynamic behavior you must add the CPMP, uh, which is uh, given by this, connected with uh, the load capacitance in parallel like this. And you can easily estimate uh, the right time TR when the output voltage reaches VP. And this value in, you can input here, then you should resolve J, which is a TR, like this. And this is a, a validation to see if that model is uh, valid by comparing the results, spy simulation results. Uh, this uh, graph shows the rise time versus VDD, rise time versus number N, stage N. And uh, the surprisingly, uh, the, you have the minimum rise time as a function of VDD. And uh, uh, if you define n and mean, uh, which is the minimum number of stages to get VPP from VDD with zero output current. If you use that number, this minimum rise time, uh, the optimum number stage to provide the first test uh, lies there and uh, you can uh, easily uh, estimate that optimum number stage with 1.4 times uh, enemy this is very useful uh, if you want to uh, minimize the lifetime time uh, and uh, the uh, the circuit area is given So if you, you must identify the number stages, then uh, if you pr are provided with the target values of uh, VDD, uh, VPP, and VT of the diode, then you can easily uh, estimate VNI, thereby an opt. That th that's it for uh, this uh, the dynamic behavior presentation thank you